Welcome back. You can call in now with your questions or anything that might be confusing you about fever in children. The number to call is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233. And of course, you can tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. We are talking about fever in children with Dr. Dosekun. So, Doctor, you were telling us about this overdrive of protection yes. that the body unleashes. Yes. And then instead of killing just the bug... I won't call it protection. I will call it war. War. The body is at war. I am aware that white blood cells yes. fight infection. Yes. So does this mean that there's a release of too many of these white blood cells? You've got it. There's a release of a lot of the white blood cells, and they work in what they call almost like an orchestra. As they are attacking, they're calling, some more, come and join me. And they go wild. They become activated. And they clog up the blood vessels. They destroy the linings of the blood vessels. Clots are now formed. So what happens is that there's a problem with perfusion. So there's no blood going all over the body, distributing oxygen and nutrients. And then parts of the bodies start dying. And there's a further release of even more toxins from these dying cells. So it is war, and it leads to death. There are 20 to 30 million people who die from sepsis globally. There's a lot of activity going on in the global arena where they are now training parents on signs of sepsis. They're now making them sensitized. So when their child has fever, the bells are up. Is this sepsis? Or is this a mild or localized infection where I can take my time or I could be gentle in my approach? Okay, we're going to go into the signs of sepsis. Yes. But first of all, can sepsis arise from as simple a thing as an air infection? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can have an air infection by nasty bug. Some are called streptococcus, some are called staphylococcus and hemophilus. No, but by the time a doctor gives the regular antibiotics, it shouldn't get into that, should it? No, it, it, it can still get into that. And that is why we're in trouble in the third world country. Because there's a lot of prescription direct from pharmacists. Let's mm. take a call before we continue yes. this. Hello? Hello there? I think... Hello? Yeah, hello. You came through at last. Let's have your question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's cut. It's we lost that. Of, yes, yes, Just try again, will you? So we were talking about, you said the third world countries. What, yes. what is uh, different about the third world countries well, and developing countries? Well, one of our big problems, and I'm sure many of the people who are listening to this problem would have gone through this where they either sat at home hoping the fever would resolve giving the child paracetamol or agbu, or they went to the hospital and they were sent home and said, oh, it's something mild. There was no proper assessment because an assessment must be done from the questions you ask the parents, from examining the child and from blood test. And at the end of it, the, the practitioner should be able to say, the health practitioner, this is a dangerous fever, it is sepsis, and this needs for the child to be admitted. If they come in early, if children come in early with sepsis, is it possible to just treat them for a 12-hour period, 24-hour period, and they go home and come back to either their primary care or secondary care setting? But if you come late, already parts of the body would have been damaged, and this will now need critical care. And we cannot afford and to give it. Yes, and hospitalization. We cannot. The economic burden of this type of service is something that third world countries cannot afford. We are getting a call. Yes. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. What's your question? Okay, my question. I uh, just something observation uh, with my with my kids. You know, this uh, issue with children being treated and um, at home, it's rampant everywhere. And uh, a little fear that the child is feverish before you know it, the parents go to the chemist and buy something and just treat the child like that. 
It's not good. I had that experience recently again because I'm not always in counting. Some will say, oh, my mom is a nurse, so they just treat her head like that without a uh, proper consultation or proper test. I don't think it's good for us and in raising our kids. And the other thing is, if this happens to child, what is our response? What should we do? Because the education level for this thing is so low. We should be educated more for us to know. Because most parents, they take this thing for advantage. And you know, with a child that is not supposed to die, died unnecessarily because of lack of knowledge or understanding of what is happening. So please, the appropriate um, quarters, we should step up our, our sensitization programs and our awareness programs for people to, to know more about these things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is it true what Austin is saying, that most parents just yes. sit I, at home? I think parents don't have the knowledge. And that is why some organizations are now having a fever in children campaign. And I think the federal government and the state government and even the primary care services should join interested stakeholders on setting up a sepsis awareness campaign. You were talking about the symptoms, the signs of yes. sepsis. Yes. What should anybody be looking out for? Okay. So the first thing is you, the child would have a fever or some other children react in a different way, particularly the small babies, zero to three. They suddenly become very cold. The child is not as active or, you know, um, as playful as the child should be. So it gradually gets a bit drowsy. The child is not producing as much urine as it should. If you hold the child, if your child ever has a fever and you hold the hands, or the feet and you feel it's cold you must be worried uh, you know this and sometimes children come with chills um, sometimes they come with swellings in different parts of the body but this is normally a late manifestation and if you put your heart your hands over the, the heart and you feel it's beating quite fast or you see some neck activities there you know some pulsation oh, here yes I think you should be worried about sepsis and you should go to the hospital and you must insist that blood tests should be done can dehydration be a problem in this instance? Yes, dehydration can be a problem because, number one, the child may not drink well, so it's not having enough fluids. And then if the child is very hot, the child may transpire so, and lose some fluids through the skin or through the oral mucosa. So, and part of the sepsis syndrome could actually be diarrhea and vomiting. So there are many factors that can give you a child that has sepsis and also dehydration and that's why the hospitals have to be very logical it's it really Mary, is very simple we're just not sitting down and and being critical in our health services isn't there any way to prevent it I mean these are bacteria yes protozoa. they are there are ways of preventing it in that improved hygiene improve knowledge by the parents so they know when to be worried training children or the whole family must be obsessive about hand washing particularly after doing number two but hand washing at all times okay. so it should be part of the discipline that is setting you know when you're training your children vaccinations we should have all our immunizations we're so lucky in nigeria the government has been able to ensure that we have quite a lot of vaccines being given to our children and they and keep increasing as the years yes, go by. it is very necessary because if you have something that can prevent, then we do it. Then We're having course. another call coming okay. in. Let's quickly take that. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What is, is your question? Process from River State. You're welcome. What I could. Yes, just last week here, my daughter, she's two years and um, three months old. She was diagnosed, doctor diagnosed her of sepsis. And then when I went back to read about sepsis, I mean, it sounded so serious. I was so scared. But she didn't have this high fever. Because she didn't have any high fever at all. The only reason I took her to the hospital was because when you see that, she would throw up. And it was becoming too frequent, so I had to take her to the hospital. She didn't have any fever. So when the doctor did the blood test and told me she had sepsis, you know, I haven't heard about sepsis, so I had to go and do fetch. And it looked and sounded so serious, but I was wondering. 
why? Why? Because my daughter didn't have this fever. So that is the fever thing that I'm really worried about because she didn't have any fever. So when you took her temperature in the hospital, she didn't have this high fever. So I don't know if the other things we should look out for because I know I am up to date with all my vaccines and immunizations. And so it's really scary. I'm a parent and I'm sure a lot of parents will, you know, their children will train up and they will just, you know, Overlook it and think it's something else. Okay, the when point has been made. Not there. Let's quickly handle that. She yes. said sepsis, but no high fever. It, it could happen that the child might have been having spikes that came up and down. And like when night she's fevers. measured, like night fevers, or it's an intermittent fever, or a spiking fever that comes up and goes down. But it could also be that child's reaction. Like I said, some children who have sepsis have a low temperature. So there are different ways in presenting. But, but because she had other symptoms yes, like vomiting. vomiting, yes. And I'm sure the child was a bit withdrawn, was not as happy and as playful as she normally is. She wouldn't have been eating, you know. We have to, be, we have to tune ourselves into children. You know, when we feel that there's something really wrong, we must go to either a primary care setting, if, it's not an emer if it doesn't set up as an acute um, um, symptom, or we go to... Our hospitals. Our so could we say this hospital. is the bottom line? Yes. You know your child. Yes. And you know what he or she usually does. does yes. And when things deviate from the norm. That, yes. And they're looking serious. Yes. Then go to the yes. hospital. Yes. Yes. I will. I will say. I. I wouldn't say wait for it to go serious. In our environment, we have to react a bit, you know, earlier. Because we, we can't because cope of the constraints when there's of sudden deterioration. We can't cope with it, you know, we, and we don't have the hospital services for very ill children. So we must make sure our children are not very ill. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Doseko, for pleasure. coming. I know that your schedule is very tight. Thank you. So thank much. you very much. You. And thanks for being with us and for your calls. Let's do it again next week. Have a great day. I'm Mary Alalea Yusuf.